Okay, folks, we're back again for what I think will be the final little uh, stage of dressing this journal. We uh, left off talking about some fabric. So I've prepared and got some things ready here, and I just want to show you a couple ideas. This is all about the ideas. Um, so what I did was just take some fabric scraps to the sewing machine. And let me bring the camera down just a little bit. And all I did was stuff it underneath the presser foot as I went. And I sewed in some very uneven ruffles. And they'll work just fine for this project. So as we spoke before, yes, if you want to do your sewing before you put your signature together and put it in the book, that's fine. But in case you don't or you forget or it's an afterthought, here's what you can do. I've done much of this and it works just wonderful. You can just glue it in. Remember, nothing is perfection. It's a junk journal. A junk journal. But back to the point at hand, I love fabric in a journal and I tend to put a lot of it. Now I want to say right away, all the things that I've talked to you about in this series are so quick. I flew through it. They're minuscule compared to all the wonderful ideas there are out there. And I do not claim for this thing to be an all-inclusive, thorough anything. These are just things to give you a jump off point and food for thought. So let's put another one of these ruffles in here. And this uh, page has some pink on it. So I think I'll put this one here. And yes, it's going to be enclosed in the journal. It won't stick out the side or the top. And who cares? It's a junk journal. It's an embellishment. So, let's see. Did, how many of those did I do? That might be it. So, let me show you what I... I'm going to try to quit saying the word so. I do it a lot, which has to be very aggravating. Let's see if we can pleat it as we go with our glue. I've done that before. Anything is up for grabs. Just pinch it a little bit. And then I'll go back and lay those pleats down right on the paper. And I didn't leave this one sticking out much. You can choose to leave it stick out or not. And with just a little dab of glue and fold that pleat over. And then we're going to close the, that page and it will put a piece of wax paper on it and it will press itself down right into place. You can also take a piece of lace or a piece of ribbon and lay right down over top of this. Glue it on as well. I have a little too much glue right there, so I'll just fold it over a little bit more. And let's get our wax paper. And once the book stays closed, that will be just wonderful. Let's find a place to put a tab. And I have this little scrap of this feather material. And uh, this is just an idea of what I do for a tab sometimes. Kind of fold it first, tie a knot, and then only because this end of this fabric is not quite right. 
So what I have here is a little piece of fabric with a knot tied in the middle. And let me see if my camera, nothing fancy to it. And all I'm going to do is fold it, pull on the knot a little bit. I want the knot to lay to the left or the right, either one. And let's see. And I will put fabric on both at the insides of these two tabs and I'm going to straddle it on the front and the back of a page. And let's do this one since it's right here. And just press it. And let's get some wax paper on both sides of that. while it's drying and we'll move on to another page. Now I talked to you about hinging something with a piece of um, fabric so let's hinge something on this one. I'm going to put my scissors here for weight and I've got a scrap of this fabric here. This is a special piece of fabric. It is a reproduction of an original French print. And somewhere on the fabric is the date of the original print. I don't know where it is on this scrap. But my girlfriend bought it special uh, because it was a vintage antique. And she w was generous enough to give me a small piece of it. So I can use this for a hinge on this. Oh, darn. There's part of the date. Let me see if I can find the other part. Where was that written? It was reproduced in 1992. That must have been where I tore it off prior to this project. Reproduced in 92. And I, the original one was, I think, 1700s, 1800s for sure. Now, my idea is to glue that down there and then come over here on this side and hinge something off of that, off in that direction. So, before I move out of frame, let's see if we make sure which side is up here. And I'll put that 1992 date, make sure it's straight up. Not that it matters. Now these hinges, whether they're paper or fabric, can be as fat or as thick or thin or frail or whatever you want them to be. If I'm doing a theme journal, with a particular theme. I'm more fussy about what I put in here. I'm going to put that wax paper there because now I'm going to fold that over and I'm going to find something to hinge right onto this fabric. I'll take a piece of, oh, maybe this would be good. One of these collage prints from that Etsy seller. And see, it's just a smidge too wide. So I'm going to have to sacrifice one side or the other of this. And I think the hinge is going to cover that side. I'll tear a little bit of this off just so it fits in my pages. It doesn't get buckled up when I close. And again, torn edges would be a perfect chance to do some inking. But I'm not doing inking with this project. It's just too time consuming. So I'm going to lay my print down there. And I'm going to put my glue on the fabric. And let me swing this a little bit to make sure you can see. And I'm going to put a little glue here. It doesn't have to come all the way out to the edge. It's a junk journal. And I'm just going to fold that over and pull it down onto the print. OK, 
Okay. And this piece of wax paper will also serve as a barrier. There you have it. Boy, it's getting hot in my room. It's that time of day. Let's put one more tab on. And let's do a side tab out this way. And this is little green print. I'll put it on this. Put it both on the insides. Then decide how much sticky out you want on the tab. How easy is that? There you have it. Now there's no idea that you can't take further and further and further into the next step. If you want to get really cute sometimes you could put a button, a sew up button on each side of this and sew them both on together. You could stitch through that. You could put uh, staples. Some people just staple things. The glue is going to hold it. It's not going to come off. But the whole idea about her junk journals at this stage of their evolvement is to get them as maxed out and cute as you possibly can. That's sort of, you know, the old adage of uh, less is more. Well, that's fine if that's your style and that's what you want. But I think the interest of journals is that there's something interesting, creative, and cute or pretty or fascinating to look at on each page. Some of my best-selling journals were maxed out. So on that note, let's talk about a journal being maxed out. Um, there's enough pages in this journal that if I put something on every page almost and then filled it up with tags and different things, put things in in all the spaces, it would be thick. It would fan out really like the, this, really fat. Alligator, they call it. I like journals like that, but you definitely have to have a tie that goes around them with some kind of closure. You can do, that's another whole subject, you can do anything you want. But when they're maxed out, I love them, and they have been some of my very best sellers. And then as far as collaging this, I told you we would do a little collaging with some fabric. You can do it with paper, and I've already showed you examples of what that would look like. But I found my pack of scrap fabric, and since I have fabric glue here, I thought I'll just put a few pieces on here, and we'll see. Just to give, this is all about giving you the ideas. Now, I don't want any of these little cattywampus cut off corners. Um, it's just be too hard to deal with right now. So, we'll, I just tore that little uneven spot off. <clears throat> and that leaves me a precarious little place there to try to cover, so I think I'll turn it around, and I want this to overlap, hang out off the edges of this cardboard just a little bit. So I'm just going to snip that and tear it pretty much to shape. And if it were me, and I will in the end, what I'll do is once this fabric sticks off of both ends, I'll take a little a running stitch all the way around it and get both sides together. So here's the approximate space of my piece of fabric. I don't have to glue every inch of it. But I am going to lay this right down on here and make sure it covers, sticks out the edge, tuck that in, the crease the corner there. And I better follow my own rules 
put a piece of wax paper under here. Very good. Very, very good. Okay, what else do I have in my little bag? These scraps make no rhyme or reason because... <clears throat> Everybody in the world knows that I use everything and they save me all their scraps. I sometimes cringe when I know how many pieces of fabric from a quilt maker or somebody like that that go in the trash. Oh, oh, I could start hyperventilating. In my storage unit, I have bushel baskets full of scraps this size. And I'm not ashamed to tell you, like I said before, if I don't get around to using them when I am dead and gone, somebody else can throw them away. But in the meantime, I've always had room to keep them. And I always find a use for them. As a matter of fact, here's an interesting little story. I've saved so much fabric, even fabric that I didn't like and what I call junk fabric. I saved it and I had bags full of it and I decided I was going to learn to locker hook and I found a needle and there was an elderly woman who got me started I just thank her for that because I found out I love doing it so I had all these fabric scraps junk fabric junk because it doesn't matter how good it is it's all about the colors I saved two totes full of junk fabric and started cutting them in strips to do that locker hooking. By the way, I really enjoyed that. And had this bag and my sister decides she's going to order a loom. Well, this is, I'm living in with both my sisters because they live together. Uh, and my sister decided she's finally going to order her loom after wanting one for years and doing all kinds of research. So she ordered it and I went to my storage unit and got her that bag of strips. And she's practicing her first loom rag rod right now. And it kind of, for her, it kind of takes the place of working, uh, you know, a jigsaw puzzle. Because we always have a puzzle going on a table in there in the open room, the grand room, <laughs> the living room, dining room combo. And uh, now she can use those strips for her rag rug. She's doing a great job. It's real interesting to watch it come together. And um, I'm looking for another appropriate piece of fabric. I'll just use this little green dot, polka dot. She can use all those strips for a rag rug. Uh, the loom she ordered is exactly the kind I had been kind of researching. She ordered it uh, from, oh, some Etsy site, but the people also have a YouTube channel and it's called DIY on the Home. And uh, the husband and wife both do wonderful creative stuff. Now, I don't need that on there, so I'm just going to cut that off. And again, making sure my fabric stuck out over the edge because I'm going to pinch from the front and the back and stitch them together. Now we just have one tiny little spot left there. Let's do this one because it's near to the right width. Yep, work wonderful. Just wonderful. How many of you feel guilty about all the stuff you've amassed? Well, if you do, I want to point something out, which I got this idea many years ago. You know, nobody thinks anything about it for the man of the house 
to have a workshop full of tools. And men are famous for running back to the store and getting another tool and another tool. Oh, they need everything. And then they kind of make fun of, fun of the lady folks for all the stuff they want to amass for their crafting, sewing, quilting, leather working, whatever the case might be. All right, that was an easy job. And let's take one more look at it of collaging all that fabric on what I call the signature cover. Now, I'm not going to make you watch while I collage this side of it, but I'm going to cover this with fabric as well. And now you have a good overview and a good idea. And any little subject that you feel like you need more instruction on or more ideas, just in your YouTube, you know, search bar, put in um, fabric collage for journals or fabric collage, or, or you want to know more about a signature cover, put in signature cover for journals. Lots and lots of options will come up. And let's just leave through quick backwards what we did today. Added a few fabric embellishments. That's ready to come off. And there's our little fabric tab. You know, that's not quite dry. That's the thing I'm finding is the only difference between fabric tack and fabric fix. The fabric fix dries a little slip. And there was our fold out from the last video and here's our fold out and that's still not dry but I'll show it to you again how it's working it's it's a flip out but it's with a fabric hinge instead of a paper hinge was there anything else I wanted to mention I think we're just about done with this project so I'll call this one the last uh, uh, concerning this. So this will be, uh, you know, fab um, what was it called? Fabric covers, or journal covers, fabric collage. Journal covers, fabric collage number six. And that'll be the end of that, except that when it's totally dressed out in full, and I don't know if that'll be next week, next month, or six months from now. I'll do another video called The Flip Through. And I hope that gives you some ideas, and I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you like uh, fabric collage or journal making or fabric work of any kind, give me a thumbs up and a little comment, and then I'll know which way to take my interests. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. God bless you, and let's get back together again real soon.